Hey everyone and welcome to episode two. We are so excited about the feedback that we had from episode one when we discuss what to wear to the golf course, what you need in your golf bag, what clubs you need. And today we're going to discuss everything about once you get to the golf club. Britt's going to kick things off with how to book a tee time. Thanks Ashley and welcome back. Um, so booking a tee time is making your reservation for your time at the golf course. The way the tee sheet works is like a big long train. So our whole day is scheduled in anywhere from seven to 10 minute intervals every time someone has a reservation. You need to have a tea time booked so that you can get on the train essentially. There's no way to squeeze in between people or to cut in front of them because there's always someone coming behind you. So that's why it's important to book your spot especially during uh, COVID-19 protocols, we require everyone to have a tea time booked. So I've got a short video here to show you how to book online. You can also book by calling the pro shop. So I thought it might be a good idea to show everyone uh, what we mean by talking about the tea sheet. So this is the booking system that we use uh, to keep all of our guest bookings and member bookings straight. So we have the whole day here from 6.30 or 7 in the morning all the way through to 7 o'clock at night. Um, so on our busy days, like a Saturday or Sunday, or maybe if we have a tournament on, this whole sheet will be filled with names of people coming to golf, which is really awesome. Um, so right now we have a few booked in. I just made a booking for Ashley Robin and myself. So we're a threesome here behind a couple groups of four. If I did have someone call and they were a group of one or two, I would probably suggest that they go out before these groups or after, maybe give some, some space in between, just because you don't wanna be um, rushed by these groups. And if they were a beginner, I'd probably recommend that they go a bit later out here, just so that they're not uh, gonna be running into these groups or having any troubles. If you really had a set time in mind, like you wanted to go right at 7.30 or 7.40, I could put you in, but the reason why someone might suggest a different time to you is for your benefit too. So we wanna make sure that all of our guests and members have a really good experience um, and if there's any way that we can on our end kind of suggest that you change your time then that's what we'll do um, so to actually go online and book a tea time you go right through our website at whitesboroughgolfclub.com and book now and most golf courses do have online booking available as well so it's really easy um, you can do it any time of day you don't have to worry about calling and waiting to hear back about confirmation. It gives you like that automatic guarantee. So as a public player, we'll enter here and then it will require you to submit a login number. So we have four easy steps and these are kind of the questions we need to answer. So what day we're gonna book on, I'll just say Monday. I only want to play nine holes and there's two of us. So it's going to show me if there's any specials on on the course, um, which we are full at that time. <laughs> um, and then it gives me my next couple options around the time that I pick. And I think we're going to walk and next. And then it will require that sign in. So. I'll enter my white squirrel sign in here. And then my name comes up, which is Perfect Partners, uh, that I'm walking in. Player number two is just a guest today. It's going to let me know the price here and give me some of the terms and conditions um, so that I can kind of know what the booking policy is if I have a cancellation or a no show. So you hear that that's done. 
and then it asks for your credit card details and billing address so that you can fill in um, and then it's all prepaid online so it's pretty easy and that will send you an email with your confirmation of your booking Awesome. So that video just explained how to book online and it also gives you an option to prepay online as well, which is especially good right now. Um, you can also book a tea time by calling the pro shop at your local golf course. So you want to have some questions ready to be answered in advance. They'll ask you things like your name, phone number and email, as well as how many players are in your group, their names as well. And if you want to get carts or if you'll be walking, it's important to book your carts in advance so that we can make sure we have enough for everyone that's pre-booked cart. Some other questions you might ask are about the club's dress code, if they have any specials on that day, and how to get to the golf course. If you're not sure where you're going, you might want to ask for some special directions. Other than that, you'll be all set to go. And don't be afraid to ask questions when you're on the phone with the staff and they'll be able to help you. So after we get to the course, I think Robin's gonna help us from there. Thanks, Britt. Yeah, it's so important to have that tea time booked. And if you are um if you already are a golfer, then go ahead and you can go out there and just start golfing. But one of the questions that we got this week from like a real beginner was, okay, so I know what to do, I know what to bring, I know how to get to the course, but what really should I be doing first? I actually don't really know how to golf, um, but I've watched the first episode, so now what? I think, Ashley, do you wanna share your thoughts on this? Thanks, Robin. I think the most important thing that a golfer should do is to actually take a lesson because it's easier to make good habits than it is to break bad at once and golf is extremely overwhelming at the start and if we can break down some barriers and get you comfortable and give you a few things to think about and some goals to set it will make your game a lot more enjoyable once you do take the lesson when you go to the range it sets you up for success because now you're not just going over there to the driving range and rapid firing and repeating all the bad swing habits or the help from your husband that you got you actually have a trained professional giving you some tips that are going to see improvement and make it more enjoyable for you. Now, when you do get to the driving range, we want to make sure that you think about safety first. So we all have markers at our range that are set up spaced nicely for you, and we want to make sure that you're always hitting between them. Please do not go in front of them. This is a safety 101. Even if it's your tee, that's fine, but just pay attention to the golfers around you and make sure that before you go after that tee, nobody else is swinging. The other mm -hmm. thing I like people to do is just take a little bit of a look around and make sure that you're not coming into contact with anybody. Because sometimes when we get hitting golf balls, we get in the zone and we're not really aware of what everybody else is doing around you. So it's always a good idea to kind of take a quick look when you change up clubs. Um, one of the tips I love is making sure that you put your golf cart, if it's a cart bag, on the ground. Because it's gonna fall over, okay? And people are gonna look over at you and we don't want you to feel uncomfortable. So if you don't have a stand bag, it's just as easy to set your bag on the ground. Now, the other thing we want to think about is taking your time when you're hitting. Okay, I talked about rapid fire and I see lots of people who get a large bucket of balls, 75 to 100 balls in a bucket, and they can take 15 minutes to hit them. My rule of thumb is that I want you to hit a shot every 15 seconds. So you're only hitting four shots in a minute. That would be my maximum because that gives you a chance to kind of go through your pre-shot routine, go through your checklist that you have with your coach and kind of just relax in between. This also helps you get on the course better because you're not on the golf course rapid firing hitting shots. You're actually hitting a shot and walking and hitting a shot. So a lot of times golfers have the struggle from taking their range game to the course and the biggest thing is because you are rushing so much when you're on the driving range. So Robin, now that they kind of know what they wanna do once they get to the driving range and they've got a lesson and they've got some plans to kind of make that um, practice time with a purpose, if they now and they know how to book a tee time, what time of day should a beginner play? Yeah, thanks Ash, those were some really great tips. Sometimes it can be very overwhelming when you go to the driving range first, so um, yeah, you covered some really good points there. Um, but now, you know, you've gone to the range, you're kind of comfortable with hitting the ball and you say, okay, I want to go golfing. It is important to 
go at the right time, especially as a beginner. Um, most courses, they, they do love catering to beginners because, you know, it's the future of the game. It's growing the game. But we also have, we have a set of members and they've got a routine. They like to get out there, play their golf and get home. For us at Seaforth, it is often quite busy in the mornings. Um, we've got some leagues and stuff, but really everyone's sort of in their routine. They, they as I said, they get there, they golf and they go home. They don't want to wait around. Everyone just keeps rolling. So if you are a beginner, it's always best to go at an off-peak time. So when you do call to book your tea time or your booking um, online even, it's good to be aware of when those off-peak times are. If it's quiet, that means you're going to be more relaxed. There's not going to be someone pushing up from behind. People get nervous that other people are watching you. So if there's a group behind you, then you get frazzled and you probably won't be able to hit the best shot. So it is best to go when it is quiet. Now, sometimes it's hard and um, you know, some seasons are busier than others. So you may get out there and it's supposed to be an off peak time, but there's still someone that catches up to you or um, is behind you. And then that's where playing through comes into play. Mm -hmm. So what um, we like to tell people is that it's okay to let a group go past you. That is, it's better for everyone in the long run. First of all, you won't be feeling like, oh my gosh, I need to hurry. They're watching me. I got to get this shot over with. I'm just going to keep going. You're going to be really not loving the experience. The people behind are going to be like, what are these people doing? Like it's taking so long. I just want to get my round done. So it's better for both if you just let them through. So there's two good ways to let people through. If you feel like you're just sort of um, in the middle of the fairway, you've got a long way still to go to the hole. Just step to the side of the fairway into the rough, give the people behind you a wave and they'll play through. Now make sure you watch their golf balls as they tee off because even though maybe they are faster than you, that doesn't mean that they're super accurate. Um, so just um, watch the balls for your own safety. And then the other way is if you just finish up on the putting green, you put your ball in, you go to the next tee, just wait there. And then you can tell the group um, as they approach, you know, would you like to go through? Um, feel free. Then they'll come up, they'll tee off, they'll say thanks very much. They'll be on your, their way and you'll be able to relax again. So don't forget to just let people play through and you'll just enjoy your golf so much more. Awesome. So that's kind of where, Robin, I think the idea of the tee sheet being a train comes back in. So the problem that can happen is if you're a beginner and you get stuck in a full tee sheet, if you do let someone through, now that group behind them is right up to you as well. So we want to find a time where it's really spaced out. And that way, if there is a group that catches you, you can let them through, but then you shouldn't have any problems for the rest of your round. Um, exactly. The best times for that is usually like late in the evenings, like after four, um, but just double check that the golf course doesn't have a league or like some type of special event on, I think is the best. Yeah, totally. Awesome. So we had another question about the driving range and now that they know where to go and what to do, what clubs should they be using when they get there? And my rule of thumb is always start with an iron. It's easier to add length and speed than it is to take away. So if I'm going to the driving range, I typically start with my sand wedge, seven iron, four hybrid, seven wood, and finish with my driver. I like to um, change it up the odd time, but that's pretty much what I like to warm up with because those are the clubs that I'm going to use the most out on the golf course. And again, we don't want you going over to the driving range. We know it's so much fun to hit the big dog, the driver, but we really got to make sure that you put in the time with your irons because you're going to be hitting them a lot more than you would hit your driver. Because on a normal hole, on a par five, you would hit a driver, potentially a seven wood, maybe a seven iron, maybe a pitching wedge, and then your putter depending on the level of golfer. So as you can see, I just listed off three irons and only one driver. So kind of put your timing in. If you're spending half an hour hitting balls, I like to spend about 20 minutes on my wedges, irons, and maybe hybrids in the last 10 minutes on my fairway woods and drivers to finish. Yeah, Ashley. And just to add in, um, especially if you're a beginner and if you've had a lesson, I'm sure that your coach will have told you this, but feel free to tee up the ball, even with your irons. Yes. Everyone thinks that it's just, um, you can just tee up your ball with your driver. But as a beginner, we want to give ourselves as much advantage as we can. So just tee the ball up. 
and then you're just trying to sweep the grass right under the ball, knock the tee over, and you'll be on your way. Awesome. All right, so now we're actually going to go to the course. Um, golf, as we have talked about previously, caters to everyone. So you can walk, you can ride, or you um, can pull your clubs so you don't have to carry them. Um, here's a video describing what it will actually look like if you come to the course and you're gonna take a power cart. Then we'll follow that up with how to get set up on a pull cart. Um, so here we go. Arriving at the course for the first time can be intimidating, so here are some tips to make your transition smoother. First thing is knowing how to carry your golf bag. If you rock up to the course carrying your bag like this, everyone will know that you don't know what you're doing. Simply take the biggest strap, put it over your shoulder, and you'll be on your way. Now we never take our clubs into the pro shop or the clubhouse. There should be a stand here to put your bag on, but if there isn't, simply just leave them at your car or off to the side. Now I'm going to check in. So I'm all checked in. I've got my scorecard, pencil, and cart key. I also purchased some drinks from the clubhouse. Remember, it's illegal to bring your own alcoholic beverages onto a licensed facility, so buy them inside. There are a couple tricks to putting your bag on the cart. First, make sure the pockets are facing out so you can access them through your whole round. The golden rule is making sure that you put the strap through the golf bag handle and then simply Put it through the clip, lock it in place, and we're on our way. It's that simple. Have a great round. If you're wanting to get out and walk your round of golf, but carrying your bag seems like a lot and you want to protect your low back, a great option is a pull cart. Here at the Sunset, we have ones that have no straps, so all you have to do is place your bag on here, and it's ready to go. So there are two wheelers, three wheelers, and four wheelers available depending on the golf course you have. Ours are easy to push, they have an umbrella holder, a spot for your drinks or your um, snacks, and they're really easy to push. Now make sure you're pushing your pull cart. You don't want to be pulling because that puts pressure on your low back. So this is a great alternative if you do have low back pain and you don't want to carry your bag and still get some exercise. Okay. Thanks for the videos, ladies. I think that definitely will make it really straightforward when we all go to the course. I always have a really hard time with the pull cart straps, so I'm feeling much more confident that I'll be able to put my bag on and not have it fall off as soon as I walk off the first tee. Um, I'm glad we had some good suggestions on when the best time for beginners to golf is, but I was just curious, what is your favorite time of the day to go golfing? Um, well, I have been golfing a lot in the morning lately, like really, really early, and I just find it's such a peaceful time. It's so nice to be out there. I just go on my own. Um, you know, the sun rising, the birds are chirping. We've been lucky with the weather lately, but definitely for me, like early morning or late in the evening, I think that's like super prime time. Yeah. Um, my favorite, yeah, so mine, I have two. If I'm playing the sunset course, it's first thing in the morning, like you, Robin, absolutely. I love the smell of freshly cut grass, and yeah. I love that I'm like the first person out there, and I just, it's very calming. But I also, after a long day, I love playing our par three course at like 7.30 at night. Nobody's around. I have played in 40 minutes. I've got nine holes done. I've worked on pretty much every club in my bag. And there's something calm about being able to kind of go out for a walk after supper and still play golf and get your nine holes in. And yeah, those are my top two times. Love it. I'm in what the same. You, yeah, I've never really played at like peak time, I, to be honest. Um, I'm an after dinner time, you know, going out at 6.30 and or like maybe a bit earlier if you're if you're playing with family on like a Sunday afternoon around like two or three and then going home and having supper outside after. So 
yeah, I kind of stick to the more quiet times as well, but I think working at the course, the best time is like first thing in the morning, like 6.30 or 7 when it's just so quiet and you kind of get like some mornings, like a little bit of a mist and the sun <laughs> rising and yeah. It's kind of magical actually. Yeah. yeah. You and can't think- put a price on that. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I think that's one thing. I think um, all of us have just said like our favorite times, but I feel like we were all talking about maybe if we were just like golfing on our own or maybe one other person. And it does make a huge difference. Like if you have a foursome, because most um, like the four is the maximum amount of people that you can have in a group um, for those that didn't know that. But also like if you have a bunch of foursomes back to back, it seems to sort of just flow. Whereas if you are just out on your own, obviously you're going to be faster than a foursome. So that's, I think probably also why we like to go at those like off peak times because we're just one person, we're just whipping around. But um, yeah, it's, yeah, I mean, golf is just so awesome any time of the day. The other <laughs> fun time that like, I know we've done Robin with our friends a few times is like a Friday afternoon. Yeah. And like, it's been fun because it's kind of something different. Um, maybe have a couple beverages and just get to spend some time with the girls and, and go for a few yeah. bowls. So much fun. Yeah. That's awesome. So I think that concludes all the information for episode two. Um, We've kind of gone over how to book a tea time, how to use the driving range, maybe thinking about booking a lesson with a a local pro, and how to properly load your clubs on the cart and the pull cart. Um, So next week we can look forward to getting into some swing basics and some drills that you can use at home. Don't forget to like all of our Facebook pages. That's Goddard Sunset Golf Club, Seaforth Golf Club, and White Squirrel Golf Club for your chance to be a part of our awesome giveaways. If you like and comment our post or share it, you get extra entries into our uh, giveaway draw and you could win lessons, golf, or gift certificate of each one of our courses. Um, remember to submit any questions to Brittany at White Squirrel Golf Club and we'll answer them in our next video. Thanks so much, you guys, and we'll see you in episode three. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.